and welcome to Catalyst Kids at Home. My name is Sarah and you are so, so very welcome to be here today. Now, this might be your first ever time joining us for Catalyst Kids at Home, our primary kids church service. If so, you are also very welcome. Or maybe you're watching for the hundredth time, also so very welcome. Or maybe you land somewhere in the middle of those numbers and once again, oh so, 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 so very welcome. It is great to have you all with us today at church. Now we have so many exciting things in store today. We have some summer challenges, we have some worship, we have some amazing Bible stories, we have some special guests, woohoo, and lots and lots of fun. So coming up first, we are gonna worship, which is when we sing and dance to say, God, you are amazing. And you know, as I was thinking about worship today, I was thinking about a really old song that people used to sing in church. Sometimes those are called hymns. So I was thinking of a hymn and it goes like this. It says, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And you know, when we worship God, when we sing and dance and say, God, you are incredible. That is what happens. It's like God seems to get bigger and brighter in the way that we think, in the way that we feel in our heads, in our hearts, in our lives. And things in our world that maybe bother us or worry us or stress us out a little bit, those things tend to shrink back down. So that is my prayer for our worship today. We're gonna to do that just now. If you jump to your feet, get ready to sing and dance and worship. Here we go, woo!
hello, hello again, wonderful worship. Now you might have noticed in that time I have taken off my Catalyst Kids t-shirt to reveal something a little bit different underneath. This is a wetsuit and this is a paddle. And you might be thinking, oh, Sarah, why are you, why? Yeah, I will explain everything to you in a moment, but first I have a special surprise for you. It is time for our Some Summer Skills Challenge. This week we have the amazing, incredible Fiona from our North Sight Kids team, and she is gonna lead you in this challenge. So if you jump to your feet and get ready, take it away, Fiona. I'm Fiona and I am delighted to be able to introduce to you the next Summer Scales Challenge, which this week is based on the Olympic sport of archery. But when I was looking around my house, well, I couldn't find an archery target board, but I do have a bottle. This one is Lidl's Deluxe Elderflower Cordial with spring water and it was delicious, but now it is empty. So it is going to be my target. I'm going to pop it down there on the tray. Now, I don't also don't have any bows or arrows or anything to shoot with. Well, in fact, I do have things to shoot with. I have got a beautiful sporty mug and in my mug there are some raisins. Now, if you don't have raisins at home, you can use frozen peas or dried peas or frozen sweet corn or pine nuts or anything really that's about this size and it is good to shoot with. So, the aim of the Catalyst Archery Challenge is to take your raisins or peas or sweet corn or pine nuts and to drop them, ooh, without sticking, into the bottle, like so. But, of course, that is too easy. So. To make it harder, we need a chair. Clamber onto the chair, and let's see. Whoa. Be scientific about this, shall we do from about, oh, half a metre, something like that. Take your raisins or your peas, one half a metre, and we are going to see how many we can get in 30 seconds. So I need to start my timer. Start. Here's my bottle, not empty any longer. It has one, two, three, four, five, a whole six raisins in 30 seconds. I'm sure you can do better than that, but it's one to get practicing. See if you can challenge your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister. See if you can get the most in in 30 seconds. And by the end of the week, you will be brilliant at it. Just need that steady hand and a little bit of hand-eye coordination. You'll be fab, enjoy. Amazing, thank you so much Fiona for that incredible challenge. I wonder how you guys at home got on with that. Was it easy peasy lemon squeezy? Was it difficult as can be? How did you find it? Now remember, you can keep practicing these some summer school challenges all week long with your families, compete against each other, see who gets the fastest, strongest, best at them all. And now, I suppose, I better explain why I am wearing a wetsuit, shall I? I think I shall. Well, there are three simple reasons as to why I am wearing this wetsuit today and carrying a paddle. Um, so reason number one is that I love the water. I love being in the water. I love paddle boarding. I love swimming in the sea. I love being by the beach. I just love the water. And I love sharing the water with people that I love. I love telling people, hey, have you been paddle boarding? Come with me, hop on my board. I love saying to friends, do you wanna go swimming in the sea? Come with me, let's go swimming. I love sharing the things that I love with other people. How do you feel like that? Is there anything that you love that you just love to share with other people? Reason number two is that this little wetsuit is actually a gift and it's a gift that I got quite recently. And I don't know about you, but have you ever got a gift that you just love so much that you just want to wear it all the time, you want to share it with everyone, you want to say, look, look, look at this amazing thing. 
well, that's how I feel about this wetsuit. As soon as I got it, I just wanted to put it on and show everyone that I know and show you guys how cool it is. Do, do, do. And it's amazing. Sometimes we get gifts like that that we think, I just need to tell the world about this. This is incredible. And you know, that's also something that we're gonna hear about with the Connect crew in space today. We're gonna hear about sharing the best gift ever. Why would you get an incredible gift and choose to never open it? Or get an incredible gift and choose to never share it with people? That would be madness. Now, reason number three as to why I'm holding a paddle, wearing a wetsuit, is because I heard that this week with the Connect crew, we're talking about, I'm on a mission to go people fishing. And you know, I thought, well, fish, people, water, fish, water, wetsuit, paddle, maybe I'm gonna need all this stuff. Let's find out. <laughs> Science -y stuff. Here, drink this, see what happens. Uh... Oh, hey guys! Mike and Alyssa here. And we're on a mission to be the church. The church isn't just a building. The church is the people who've chosen to follow Jesus. Like us, which is why I have a surprise for you, Alyssa. Ooh, I love surprises. What is it? Here you go. There's one for you and one for me. I mean, I like the color pink, but what does a fishing hat have to do with our mission? It will make more sense here in a moment, but first it's time to rehearse, rehearse the, the verse. verse. Today's verse comes from Mark chapter 1, verse 17. Say it like this, Mark 1, 17. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. Repeat after me. Okay. Mark 1, 17. Mark 1, 17. Come follow me, Jesus said. Come follow me, Jesus said. And I will send you out and I will send you out to fish for people. To fish for people. Wait, fish for people? That's weird. It does sound weird, but it's a part of our mission. One, love God. Two, love others. That's it. Mm. Here, watch this video. Hey, Hank, do you want to Sorry, why are we being quiet? Because I have some great news. Really, that's great. I Sorry. Is your great news a secret? No. I want the whole world to know about it. Well, you're going to have to talk louder if you want the whole world to know about it. You are so weird. In fact, you know what? Let's just go to our question of the day because everyone knows Hank, Hank knows. knows. <laughs> Noah writes, Jesus is the leader of my life, and I love it. I know we're supposed to share Jesus with everyone, but I don't really get how to do that. Any advice on how to help me? Hank, any advice for Noah? Well, Noah, the key to letting people know about Jesus is to stay as quiet about him as possible. What is with you today? Shh. Hank, when you have good news, you're not supposed to keep it quiet. You're supposed to let everyone know. But what if people don't want to hear your news? Hank, good news is good news. Have you ever gotten a gift that you really liked? Once a Triceratops friend bought me a nice orange blanket for my tail. And did you really like this gift? Oh, 
Oh yeah, I did. I'm cold-blooded, you know? It was very thoughtful. But you definitely kept this gift locked away so no one could look at it, right? Are you kidding me? I took that blanket with me everywhere I went, even in the shower. <laughs> That's exactly how it is with Jesus. Jesus is God's gift to us. So we're not supposed to lock him away. We're supposed to let him out so everyone can see him. We can talk about Jesus. We can love like Jesus. And then everyone will see Jesus all over us. In fact, talking and loving like Jesus is a great way to share Jesus with the world. So we should definitely not stay quiet about Jesus. That's exactly my point. No, that's my point. Hope that answers your question. Tune in next time, because you know... Hank, Hank knows. knows. Shh. <laughs> Okay, I still don't get the whole fishing for people thing. Shh. Okay, Hank. I thought you said this video is supposed to help me understand. Fishing for people is all about sharing the good news about Jesus. Mm. I read about it somewhere in the Bible. Let me find it. Ah, there it is. The Great Commission. Watch this. This is a 66 pick mixed up into one. The book's about God, who he is and what he's done. It's the Holy Bible, y'all, with God's truth packed out inside. It's a life of God's to hide in your heart and in your mind. Old Testaments are set up for the big event. When Jesus crashed the scene with a new arrangement. It's history, his story, whose story, God's story. Let us blow up all the pages that this show gone on. Let us world explode from this video into your life. Now go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. Hey, Bouncy. Oh, hi, Dot. You're reading the Bible again. Is that the book of Matthew? Yeah, I just read about how Jesus came back to life. But then it just kind of stopped. The story's over. I thought it would be more like happily ever after. Oh, Bouncy, it is ever after. For Jesus' disciples, it was the beginning, not the end. Jesus told his disciples to go and make more disciples. Um, Dot? Yes, Bouncy? I know the word disciple, but I don't really know it. Disciple is a word that means student or learner. You know, Jesus' followers. When someone first hears the good news about Jesus and decides they want to live like him, there's still a lot to learn. But how are they supposed to learn? Did Jesus stay and teach them? Nope, Jesus went back to heaven with God. But his very last sentence gives a big promise. You can be sure that I am always with you to the very end. Oh yeah, Jesus is with me in my heart. And with me too. Jesus goes with us as we go tell others about him, as we share God's love with others, and as we teach them to obey Jesus. Jesus gives us the power to do something he did all the time. What's that, Dot? Make disciples. Jesus did do that all the time. I just read about how he spent time with his disciples every day. He hung out with them. He taught them things. He prayed with them. He showed them what God's love is like. And he showed them how to be free from sin. Exactly, Bouncy. Jesus made disciples. He taught others how to be like him. Making disciples is what he told all of us to do now. You know what, Dot? You are really good at that. I'm a disciple of Jesus because you taught me how. And you're just a kid like me. Yes, Bouncy. Even kids can make disciples. Everyone who decides to live for Jesus must do what Jesus told us to do. Make disciples. Like those guys on the mountain on Jesus' last day on Earth. Right. 
We wouldn't even be here today learning how to be a disciple if Jesus' disciple Matthew hadn't written all these stories down for us to learn from. They told the people they knew. And they told the people they knew. And they told the people they knew. And they told the people they knew all the way to us today. Let's think of some people we know who we can tell about Jesus. Yeah, I want to tell some people about Jesus. See? Jesus' very last words to us were about spreading his story to all the world. So others can know him too. Yeah. Now do you get it? It's like fishing for people. Get it? Mm. Uh, you will. Let's see what Evan has to say about it. And now it's time for... Evan explores the world! Wow, that was really nice, Carlton. Thanks. I've been practicing. Hi. Welcome to Evan Explores the World, the show where Evan, that's me, explores the world. Now, you might already know that our leader, Dr. Jesus, has called you and me to do a very important mission. But what you might not know is that we're not alone. People all over the world are on the same mission that we're on. And the best part is, we get to be a part of that mission every single day. That's what the mission is about. So every time you share with your, your friends, your cousins, your bus drivers, your waiter, your teacher, your doctor, uh, uh, your, your teammates, the, the weatherman, the man on the moon, you're helping be a part of the mission. And that's what it's all about. That's it. So tune in next week when... Evan explores the world. I mean, what, Carlton? Did you put something else something else stupid on the sign, Carlton? <laughs> what? No, I didn't. You know, you know what? That's it. I'm coming for you. I got Uh-oh. Our friends have been learning about living out God's mission to share the good news of Jesus with everyone in the world. Today's point may seem like a mystery to Alyssa, but it is very much like what Jesus said to his disciples. Say the point with me. Are you ready? I'm on a mission to go people fishing. Very good. Hopefully, Alyssa will discover and understand this point very soon. Hey guys, Carlton here. I bet you're wondering why I'm dressed like this. You can call me a man on a mission, and I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. If you've accepted Jesus in your life, you're on a mission too. What's that, soldier? What mission, you ask? Well, it's no secret mission, but it's an important one too. Following Jesus isn't just something that we talk about in church. Following Jesus also means following the commands that he's given us to live by. And one of the greatest commands that he's given us right before he went up to heaven, some people call it the Great Commission. Get it? <laughs> and he sent you and me on a mission to lead those that we know to live life for Jesus too. We all clear on those orders? How can we complete this mission? Well, let's just go ahead and check up on some people that are already on it. Um, what are you doing? Nothing, just, uh, catching some sun. Oh, so you're taking a break? Been busy telling people about Jesus? Nah, that's not really my thing. I figure I better leave that to missionaries or priests. You know, those kind of people. Well, what about your friends and family? Have you told them about Jesus? No, I mean... I want them to get to know Jesus, but I figure I'd leave that to the professionals. Okay, so let's check in on someone else. Um, hey there, how's it going? Huh? The mission, how's it going? All right, I guess. So you're out there telling people about Jesus? No, but I will just after I finish this level. Okay, so I'm surprised, but I shouldn't be. Lean in, I'm going to get real with you. I think a lot of us are like these two. We hear about Jesus, we accept him to be the leader of our lives, but then we spend a lot of our time doing other things. 
I'm not saying having fun is a bad thing. I'm just saying that we need to stay focused. People on a mission don't usually spend a lot of time and energy on things that don't matter. They're all about the mission. Our leader, Jesus, said he's coming back. And it it's because he said it that we can know that it's true. And it's up to us, you and me, to share him with our friends and family so that they can know him too. This mission is too important to leave to others. So what do you say? Are you with me? Let's do it. This is Carlton, signing off. That's it. So you see, we're all a part of this great mission to spread Jesus across the world, and it will take all of us to do it. I know that's true, but I still don't get what Jesus meant when he said we were going to fish for people. That still seems pretty weird. You know what? I'm gonna go. To the room. Hello, Alyssa. How may I help you? Room, we've been learning a lot about sharing Jesus with the whole world. And I know it's our mission, but I'm having trouble understanding today's verse. Would you show it to me? Mark 1.17 Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. Uh, yeah, the whole fishing part is what I don't understand. Room, will you help me? After Jesus rose from the dead, and before he went to heaven, he gave his followers an important mission. Right, the Great Commission. Today's Bible story talked about that. But what does that have to do with fishing for people? I'm not a fish. Quite right, Alyssa. You're not, but Jesus has promised us that if we make him known to the world, he will draw people to him so they can follow him too, much like how fishermen gather fish in their nets. Oh, that's it. Just like fishermen gather fish, if I tell others about Jesus, then they can know him and follow him too. I get it. I'm glad, Alyssa. Now, I'm on a mission to go people fishing. I'm on a mission to go people fishing. That's it, that's the point. I connected the dots. Congratulations, Alyssa. It sounds like you have an important mission. Yes, and I know that now more than ever. Thanks, Room. You are very welcome, Alyssa. So, Alyssa, did the Room help? I finally understand what Jesus meant. And I discovered the point, connect the dots. Ooh, what's the point? I'm on a mission to go people fishing. Will you say it with us? I'm, I'm on, on a mission, mission to, to go, go people, people fishing. fishing. Our verse tells us this mission straight from Jesus himself. Will you say it with us? Mark 117. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. Awesome, now I have one more surprise for you, Alyssa. Ooh. Do we get to go fishing for real? Yes, we do. Here's yours, here's mine. Now let's see if the people are biting. Oh, you got one? I think so. Oh, 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 oh I've got one too. <laughs> Ready, one, <laughs> two, three, real. Yay! This week, let's remember to go people fishing. Let's tell others about Jesus as we, one, love God. And two, love others. That's, That's it. it. Now I know that fishing for people means sharing Jesus with others so that they can know him too. That's why I'm on a mission to go people fishing. I'm so glad someone told me about Jesus. That's when I made the choice to follow him. And it's been my mission ever since to follow Jesus. You can follow Jesus too. It's like A, B, C. A, admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying him. B, believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C, choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is your leader and number one friend. I hope you'll choose to follow Jesus today. And if you do, I hope you'll let us know about it. Talk to your small group leader today before you leave.
now. We don't have small group leaders here, like Alyssa just said, because, well, I'm in my house in my wetsuit and uh, you're in your house too. But maybe you've been watching along today and thinking, I don't, I don't think I've ever decided to be a follower of God. I've never decided to join God's mission, to be part of the church, to love God and love others, but I want to. You know, if that's you and you want to decide to follow God today, to join in that mission, then I'm going to say a prayer right now for you to become forever friends with Jesus, to become a follower of God. And if you want to, you can pray that prayer along with me just now to say, yeah, I want that. I want to make that choice today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pray one line at a time and you can just repeat that line each time after me in your own home. Okay, let's pray. God, thank you that you made me and know me and love me. God, thank you for sending Jesus to die on a cross for my sins. God, I'm sorry for all the times where I've not followed you. I'm sorry for any nastiness in my life. Today, Jesus, I want to ask, will you be my forever friend? I want to live life with you, God, and for you. Help me to live out your mission to love you, God, and love others. Amen. Amazing. Now, if you just made that decision to follow Jesus today, then tell someone about it. Share that good news. In fact, why not tell us about it? We would love to know that here at Catalyst Kids. You can email us, get an adult to email us at kids at catalyst.vin. We would love to hear all about that. Now, I will say, I think I've learned something here today. I've learned that you don't need a wetsuit to be on a mission to go people fishing. People fishing is just another way of saying, telling everybody God's good news about Jesus. And that's a mission that I know I want to be part of. Do you want to be part of that? I wonder. God gave the church, the people who follow him, a mission. It's not a mission for people who are just inside a church building, because the church isn't just a building. It's the group of people who follow him. God gave us a mission to love God, to love others. And as part of that mission, our mission is to share God's good news about Jesus with everyone, everywhere. Now, talking about missions, I think it's about time for our Some Summer Mission Challenge. Woohoo! This week's mission to help us love God and love others is this. We're going to challenge you to find a way to donate some clothes to the Storehouse Food Bank. You know, a couple weeks ago, we gave you a mission challenge to find a way to donate some food to the Storehouse Food Bank or to donate some food to people who need it in your local area if you don't live close. And you know, so many of you did an incredible job with that challenge. We have so many incredibly kind, generous, compassionate kids. Well, well, well done. So we're going to give you a slightly different challenge to that this time. You see, the Storehouse Food Bank at our church doesn't actually just collect food. Mm. It also collects clothes. And so this week, the challenge is find a way to donate some kids' clothes to that Storehouse Food Bank. Again, if you don't live locally in Aberdeen or Aberdeenshire, then why don't you find a way to donate 
some of your clothes to people who need it in your local area. That would be amazing too. You know, in the Bible, in Matthew 25, Jesus said that people who follow him should be people who feed those who need fed, who clothe those who need clothed, clothed, <laughs> clothed, who help those who need helped. That is part of our mission too. And you know, we have incredibly compassionate, kind kids here at Catalyst Kids. And a few weeks ago, we heard an amazing story of one of our preschool kids who did just that. It wasn't with food, it wasn't with clothes, but he was incredibly kind with his toys. This is a picture of Aaron. He is three and a half years old. And he heard a story about a little girl who was his age, who had just moved into a new house at the start of lockdown. And she didn't have any of her toys to play with. Imagine that, lockdown can be hard enough. And imagine not having any of your own things or your own toys, that would make it really difficult. And so when Aaron heard that story, he decided he was gonna do something about it. What Aaron did was he went and gathered in a whole bunch of toys to give away to this little girl. He took this big cardboard box and he filled it with toys and DVDs and action figures and trains and tons and tons of very fun things. And he also donated this big toy house to this little girl so that she would have tons of fun things to play with. Isn't that incredibly kind and generous? And he's three and a half. Amazing. But you know, Aaron didn't actually just stop there. He could have. That would have been an amazingly kind thing to do. He then decided to take his all-time favourite toy, his Woody toy from Toy Story, and he donated that to this little girl too. So he gave away his most favourite toy. I mean, giving away your favourite thing is a ridiculously generous kind thing to do. That is very difficult. Well, 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 well done, Aaron. So full of kindness and compassion. You are definitely showing people God's love and kindness there. And you know, I wanna challenge all of us to be a little bit like Aaron this week. Not with our toys, because we can't collect them in just now, but with our clothes. I wonder how generous you could be donating clothes, kids' clothes in particular, if you can, to the storehouse food bank. Again, you can go to our website, catalystvineyard.church, to find all the information on where and how you can donate those things in and give them away to the people who need them most. Or again, if you're not living locally to us, no problem, you can still do this and find a way to donate clothes to people in need in your community. Go be generous, good luck on your mission. Now, we have nearly reached the end of Catalyst Kids for today. It's about time for me to go jump in some water with some wetsuit, but before, with some wetsuit, with this wetsuit, not just any wetsuit, that's, that's, this is mine. I'm gonna wear this when I jump in the water. But, <laughs> Before we say goodbye today, we are going to pray and chat to God together. Now, last week, we learned a special part from the Bible in Matthew 6, where Jesus teaches the people who follow him. He teaches them a special prayer they can pray. It's called the Lord's Prayer. Now, when you pray that prayer, you can do it just like we did last week, and you can pray it just as it is in the Bible. But you can also use what Jesus said as an example of how to pray in your own words, in your own way. The things that Jesus prayed about, there's five things that we can break that down into. And they all start with the letter P. So the first one is praise. We can pray and praise God. We can take a moment to thank God for who he is and all the incredible things that he's done in the world and in our lives. We can say thank you to God for the things that we're grateful for. Number two is we can ask for provision. I'm gonna try to get them in the right order. This can be confusing. Apologies if I muddle them up. You know what? God doesn't mind. <laughs> Feel free to muddle them up. Um, we can ask for provision. We can say, God, would you give me the things that I need in my life, in my world today? Oh, I did muddle them up. <laughs> 
The second thing, which is now the third thing, is that we can pray for purpose. We can ask that God's purposes and God's plans would be the things that come to be in our life and in our world. Sometimes it's easy to want to just think about me, 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 and do things my, my, my way. But as a follower of God, we should say, God, I want to do things your way. What do you want my life to be like today? The fourth thing that we can do is repent. There's the P for you. <laughs> repent, which is basically a way of saying sorry. We can take a moment to say, God, I'm really sorry for anything that I want to be sorry about today. Anything that I've done wrong, anything that I've thought wrong, anything that I've said wrong. We can take a moment to say sorry to God for not living his way. And lastly, we can ask for, ooh, what's the word that begins with P? Protection. <laughs> we can ask God to protect us and protect the people that we love too. So what we're going to do is we're going to pray those five P's just now all together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you which P we are on and in your own time, in your own house, feel free to pause if I'm not giving you enough time, you can pray along and just chat out loud or in your head to God about these things as we go along with them praying. Okie dokie, hopefully clear as muddy mud mud. <laughs> Let's pray. Okay, we're going to start with number one. Take a moment to say thank you to God. What are you thankful for today? And pray and chat to God about that just now. Okay, once you've done that, we are going to try to get them in the right order this time. Which one comes? Purpose. <laughs> Number two. We are going to say, God, not my way, but your way. What are your plans and purposes for my life today? So take a moment to ask God for his plans to be the things that happen in your life and your world today. Let's pray. Okay, and once you've done that, the next one is provision. Think about anything that you feel like you need today. It might be a practical need, like some food or some clothes, or it might be that you need peace, or it might be that you need sleep, or it might need that you need a friend. There's lots of different types of things that we might be in need of that we can ask God for. So take a moment, chat to God, and ask him for the things that you need today. Okay, once you've done that, we're going to do repent, <laughs> the fourth P. So take a moment to say sorry to God for anything that you've maybe said or done or thought recently or maybe ages ago that you want to actually say sorry to God for not living his way. So chat to God in your own way, in your own space just now. Okay, and once you've done that, we're on number five. We are going to ask God for, I've forgotten the word again, protection. <laughs> we're going to ask God for protection. So you can pray for yourself or you can pray for the people that you love or the people just around you in your neighborhood too. Pray that God would be with those people, that God would be with you, that he would protect you and keep you safe and healthy. Let's pray. Okay, amen, amazing. Now you can keep trying to do those five P prayers at home or why not try read the Lord's Prayer again from your Bible in Matthew 6, give it a go. Now that is all that we have today at Catalyst Kids at Home, except it's not, hold your horses, Sarah, because actually what is about to appear on the screen before you is a whole bunch of questions and activities for you and the people in your house to enjoy all together. I'm going to say cheerio, but when that comes on the screen, you can boop, pause that and enjoy it with everyone in your household. Right, I will see you later. Bye-bye.